All right, good morning, everybody. We're now live outside of the seminar, and we're here with the Titan Steel Door Company out of North Georgia. Damon Sonomaro, welcome. You. Glad you're on the team. Glad we to got here. a couple of questions that were typed in earlier. All right. All right, let me start with this. The industry is aware that Titan Door Company has been a hollow metal manufacturer for just six years. But what other product lines have you developed and are able to bring to the market this year and going forward? Great question. Um, Thanks for, thanks for asking that. Well, I'm, a great, pretty, I'm, a great, I'm a great question. Pretty exciting okay. news. So uh, today, today at the seminar, we're actually launching our Gladiator wall system um, and our Titan shield system, which is our ceiling panel. So we have both the wall panels addition um, that we've seen in the industry, needing capacity, needing can we, can an option. You can absolutely. Right there? So we it's actually right, have right it. Inside here. We actually have it in the, in the, so we've got our wall panels here, our ceiling panels are located on, as a sampling is located over on our table. Um, and it just allows different product lines to add on to our hollow metal. But in this, we can actually uh, incorporate it in our plant. So it's more of a seamless transition, to get away from the, the, the on-site type fabrication. It's something that we'll work together with the architects. But, Today we're, we're launching the, the Gladiator wall panel system. That's our number one. And then number two is both the single skin and the double skin uh, ceiling panel under our Titan Shield uh, marketing campaign. So thank you guys, I'm glad you're here. Thanks. Well, we got one more question. Oh, we got David. more questions, awesome. In what ways has Titan Door addressed the growing need for more capacity given the growth in the detention market and the contraction of the manufacturers? Okay, so one big step that we made uh, January of this year, we opened our brand new 150,000 square foot facility. In that new facility, we upgraded and added robotics uh, to our already catalog that we had. We upgraded and doubled our output on our robotics. We doubled our output on our laser fabrication. We added folding machines, which both adds capacity and better tolerancing. Um, but we also increased our paint line, seeing the need for bigger jobs, but also more through, foot, through the plant. We added over 2,000 square feet to our paint line, and we think that end up that capacity right there will handle the constraints that we've seen personally, and, uh, yep. but it also allows us to grow. Fantastic. So, Damon, thanks, Joe. Thank you very much. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Guys. All right. We are now here, sitting in front of the Accurate Door Control Company. We've got Jason Lowe, the Vice President of Operations. T.J. Rogers, the CEO. Uh, our personal opinion on this team is they're the number one door control company and innovator in security electronics in the country. So, TJ, we've got Thanks a couple you. questions. What sets accurate door controls apart from your competition? Well, we feel like we set ourselves apart because of our longstanding uh, time in our industry. We spend a tremendous amount of time researching, developing products, also training our staff and training the owner staff as well. And probably the single biggest thing, and we keep talking about it, is non-proprietary controls, non-proprietary equipment, non-proprietary software, and arming the owners with the ability to service their product. That is a great, that's a great topic that comes up a lot. Everyone says proprietary versus non-proprietary. I look at it and say, look, proprietary controls means that you're gonna buy my product and then for the next 50 years, I'm going to charge you $100,000 just to have my door controls, right? Or you can take an option of buying non-proprietary. So I think sometimes when we talk about it, we take for granted that we know what that means. I don't think a lot of owners and architects really understand. It's not so much that it's proprietary, it's the service contract that you have to pay for every year that you don't realize when you go to bid the job. So why don't you guys address that? That is a really good point, Joe. And and so what happens is customer, or excuse me, uh, integrators that have a proprietary software and hardware approach, what they do is they, they lowball the job, get in there, and then for the next 15 years, as you indicated, we'll charge you a service or maintenance fee, and it's getting even more egregious. What is also happening is people are doing we'll call it web-based services. So what you have to do is have a subscription to actually 
have full control of your system and this company won't support you. Which is ridiculous because you just bought it. You just bought it and then you have to buy a subscription to maintain it and get support for it. So that's, we don't do that. We arm owners with the ability to work on it themselves. And we're there to support them with whatever capacity they need. All right, we have another great question. TJ and Jason, what is the process to make my project successful overall? Not just door, how do the door controls have to work with all the rest of the products that we talked about earlier today? Well, that's a great, another great question, Jason. And our team, Jason and I, and all of our people that develop the projects, it's key that we are coordinating with all the other manufacturers. So, as an example, Steel Cell. We know exactly how Steel Cell is going to assemble their product. We know how your team is going to install that product. Our team is coordinating with your team always. Same thing with our Brink locks. We consult with them. They know what we know exactly how their lock's going to work, the current draw, so there's no issues. That collaboration and that integration in the team, that's what makes our, our, our company successful, all of our companies successful. But before the product gets on site, we've quality control tested that three times before it even leaves our office. So we bring the owners in, they can see it as a completely operational system. Nobody does that. We set up the entire Wayne County as an example. Right. Giant project. $600 you know, million. Dollars. $600 million. Dollars. Giant project. We set up that entire system, every operator station, every camera in our office, and we let that run for months. We tested it, made sure there was going to be no issues for when it got I, I don't think, um, based on my experience of doing this for 43 years, I don't think the other competitors do. I don't think your competitors do that. They don't do that. They 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 try to dissuade. They send a box of parts, and they dissuade people from. They don't want to do that well, one, because it one, takes effort. One last thing I'll say, and, and I and I think CML would back me up on this. One of our competitors in the detention market. One last thing that both of our companies do is, we we have our own installation company. So when you guys are putting your products in, and we're testing them with our doors and locks, right? We work together in the field. A lot of times what I see is, well, the detention guy installs the door and lock. The door control guy comes along. Even if his stuff doesn't work, he says, well, the locks don't work. And then nobody's there, and everyone's pointing fingers, and the owner gets frustrated. And then afterwards, when the sheriff takes over, then he gets no service. That's exactly right. So, well, here's another example of that. So our team, we've created years and years and years of developing our team. We hire people, we just don't put them into their job, oh, go do this. We train them on the accurate way of doing things. And the accurate way of doing things is the team way of doing things. So we have a jail set up in our office. We teach people how to install a lock, how to terminate the device. Then we work with your team, and it's a team. It's not, it's your fault, it's not our problem, it's a problem, let's fix it. Let's fix it together. Yep. Would you agree with that, Jason? I, I would, absolutely. All right, guys, a great interview. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks, guys. See you back in. Let's go. All right, everybody, we're here with Will Alderson generational owner of Willoughby Industries in Indianapolis. So Will, we got a couple questions. Yes, sir. First question is, we're adding a new section to our facility with a mental health initiative. What plumbing products does Willoughby Industries have that we should focus on to maintain a safer and softer environment? So Willoughby offers several different plumbing fixtures that we've tailored towards the mental health market that are a little bit softer, a little bit cleaner. We can powder coat any of our units so they don't look like stainless, they look more of porcelain. We have solid surface products that have soft, clean edges, and then also uh, ligature, it's all ligature resistant, so to reduce tie-off points to uh, prevent self-harm. All right, we got another question. What alternative options can owners in Indiana Use to secure the products they want and the schedule they need with major materials and equipment shortages. So, planning ahead, I mean, we're just, if you can uh, 
plan ahead and say, hey, I need this material. We're trying to, as a manufacturer, keep up with all the other uh, shortages. It's one after the other. So we try to keep all that material in-house to be able to, hey, allocate for this job and plan for the future. So we aren't just planning well, job Well, I think that's a, just one quick thing. I mean, I think that's, maybe you should touch on the size of the manufacturing facility you actually have in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. We have 250,000 square feet uh, in the northwest side of Indianapolis, Park 100. We employ 125 Hoosiers uh, in the state of Indiana. We are 100% USA made. We use domestic steel for our products, so that's a big deal to us to be able to say that. All right, congratulations. Thank you, Will. Thanks, sir. <laughs> All right, good morning everybody. We're now here with Mike Smith, who you saw a little bit earlier, but Thanks, now sir. we're out here, outside, live at his new mental health facility. We got a couple questions from well, the audience. It's just, one, it's just one bed, so it's not a whole facility. It's not a whole facility, okay, all right. So what is the difference, Mike, between the polyurea coating that you use yeah. and other coatings that other manufacturers use? Sure, uh, so, and, and even back in the day before we discovered the polyurea coatings, uh, we use epoxy. I think the, you know, that's probably the next best type of coatings, epoxy. Uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, everybody's familiar with epoxies, uh, very brittle, uh, kind of on, on the scale of hardness. You've got your powder coats that are really brittle, and, you know, if you bump it, it breaks. Then you move up, you know, uh, epoxy's about that hard and brittle, and there are great applications for it. We just don't think the tension is the best application. And the polyurea, we think, is a perfect detention application because it is not as brittle, has uh, a zero, uh, is a, a, non, a completely non-porous surface, which means we can sanitize it. Actually, the, the uh, particular blend that we use is USDA food grade. So, you know, what we've been dealing with with the pandemic and other things, we can come in, sanitize these units, and get them back up and going. Now, having said that, the great reason to use it in the detention world is extremely durable. It is basically the same product as Rhino Bedline or Linex Bedlining. Those are brand names, no trademark infringements. They do great. But we're in an abusive area at best and sometimes extremely abusive. So we want something that's going to stand up for multiple years. We offer up to 10 year warranties on this coating. That was going to be one of the other yeah. questions. And that's uh, co written by the coating manufacturer, and I, I just don't think there's anything out there a, a, at all. Uh, it is just a marine and industrial coating, and that's exactly what needs to be in this environment. Well, let's do this because Mike's already given his presentation. Everyone saw. Let's go inside and get some pictures up close if yeah. you guys you want to go yeah, there. Yeah, no, so go I'll ahead. It's a little bit easier to see in, in real, you know, a live video, but the unit is divided into two separate distinct sections. We have a, you know, living or sleeping studying area. Then we have our petitions and, you know, these can vary in size and vary in how much we obscure the glazing. And, and they're meant for the passerby to not be able to have a direct view into the bathroom, grooming area, shower area. We'll step in a little closer and move into the second part. Uh, may show up on the video, but we are really seeing two different colors in these rooms, so we have a real separation in room. Uh, we've, we've done some special coating treatments to the lab and toilet to make them warmer and a little more residential. Then this entire unit is sized where it's capable of handling, uh, you know, an ADA, uh, ABA in, uh, patient. Uh, so it's wheelchair accessible and maneuverable. Our furniture that's utilized here is a molded, steel reinforced, foam filled, uh, detention grade um, bunk, desk, seat, and wardrobe. And obviously with this type of product, we can really enhance the color uh, and, and the different textures and feel of this room. And this wall also includes a, uh, includes a USB port. We can deliver you know, low voltage charging or just programming content through there to tablets and things that are utilized. 
And then uh, we again have our chalkboard, um, maybe a creative space for whoever's in here, let them add their own personal touch without damaging the unit. So grand tour, I'll say I went to a great college, but this is nicer than my college dorm room, <laughs> but uh, happy, to, happy to be able to show it off to you. And if you need it, let me know if you need it to come to your town and, and we'll be happy to discuss how we can make this fit in your project. Continuing the interviews, we're here with Brandon Harker from Norex Industries and Real Time Detention. So Brandon, we got a couple questions that came in. What are some of the ways Norex is addressing the need for a more normalized environment in correctional facilities? Yeah, absolutely, Joe. I appreciate you asking the question. Um, so right now we're working with a lot of colors and softer environments. What we're finding is that the more we can humanize the environments, the better off that they we can reduce the recidivism. So we really appreciate everything that you're doing. And uh, using colors has really helped build a better environment for yeah, we got the corrections. Good examples right yeah, here, absolutely. Right? So this is our rocker that everybody seems to love. Um, a really great product. It's a rotationally molded, got all the fire ratings, but also gives you the comfort that you need for all of the environments and also makes it for a lot of mental health facilities as well. And then this is our Hondo Nuevo product. It's a rotationally molded but also fully rubberized and filled with foam. So what it does is it gives you all the cleanability and durability, but also the humanized environment that you want in a correctional facility. All right, we got one more question for you. What are some of the trends for day room and cell furnishings and corrections? As an example, we were just over at Steel Cell, yes. their new mental health unit, yes. and we saw your product in there. Yeah. I think, why don't you address that for the sure. people that are watching this? So, so the goal right now, like I said before, is to make it more of a humanized environment. We're trying to use the same materials that we've used for years in the harder plastics, but we're trying to make it more like a dorm furniture and feel more homey so that we can give these people kind of a humanized feel for when they get back and try to get back into the real world. Great. Perfect. Great. 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 Yep. Joe, hey, I appreciate let's just take a quick All right. For our last live interview underneath the tent this morning, we have Jackson Osier, yeah. second generation owner of Willow Products. Jackson, we got a couple of questions from the audience for you. Can you expand on your slider, slider retrofits and the benefits of the retrofit slide? Sure. So our slider retrofits are for our old Willow sliding devices that are at the end of their life cycle. We also offer them for other people's devices that are in the end of, at the end of their life cycle. And what it does is it utilizes the existing housing, lock, post, receiver, guide, and door, and replaces all the internal working components Without so that you can down the device. old slider and everything. That's correct? right. So it's a good economical solution. All right. Well, here's the key. Here's the key question I want because we just got a product working together. Tell the people about your new, not your newest product, but the best product, I think. Let's talk about the Willow Wedge Lock. Okay, we have the sample of it right here. Yeah. So the uh, Willow Wedge is our surface mounted lock pocket. Um, it was designed into the common problem of inmates finding ways to manipulate the existing locks and get out of their cells. So it has patented features that work in conjunction with each other to stop them from being able to do this while also providing an alarm on the floor if the lock has been tampered with or is so, not dead with So inside properly. of this box is a Brinks RR Brink 5020 maximum security lock, correct? That's correct. That's correct. And as an example, we just we just recently closed a job for replacing 1,200 locks for an existing state facility, Lawrenceville, Illinois. You want to talk a little bit about that project? Sure. So that job uh, is around a thousand doors, and um, what we do is we utilize the existing door and frame. Uh, this welds to the existing door and frame. We're able to utilize the existing wiring. Um, they're replacing the controls at that facility. So we're able to make this work with the existing controls. Fantastic. Thank All you very right. much, Thank Jackson. You. Everyone, we, now we're done with the interviews on the 10. We've got an extra 10 minute break. Then we're going to go back inside and listen to TJ Rogers from Accurate Door Controls talk to you about security electronics.